And what is up guys, Technicals Tinkers here checking in on our little 3D print operation for today. If you're new to the channel, welcome or unfamiliar. I'm a retired male model and uh, doing this 3D print thing, starting it up, seeing if I can do it here at home, generate some sales and also learn about 3D printers, 3D printer, you know, using it for commerce as sort of a side hustle uh, sort of thing. Just exhibiting what I'm doing day to day. This is not instructional. So join the channel, follow along in the process, teach me something. Maybe you'll learn something from my mistakes. Also do giveaways and things like that. So go ahead and subscribe. So what am I working on today? Well, if you can hear it, all the printers are pretty quiet, uh, and that's kind of a, for a good reason. If you've been following the channel, you know I've got the uh, drawer section for the P1P. That's all done, and so I'm going to install that today. The Cobra's doing kind of a sort of thing. If you saw my charity video, I was talking about doing some design uh, that when you buy the model for it uh, or buy it on the Etsy, uh, that a percentage or proceeds go towards uh, an animal charity. And so I've been working on that. A lot of people ask about my spool rollers. It's a free design off Thingiverse. Uh, I won't link it in the description because ultimately I want you to get mine. Uh, but when I sort of borrow <laughs> an idea, uh, I don't use the files. I do look at it and measure it and design my own version of it. You can call that copying if you want, but I'm not using the file, so it's not really copying. Plus it's free on the internet, who cares? Uh, so my aim is to make a actually a better version, one that holds a five kilogram spool, ultimately ho hopefully one that makes that holds any size spool, but I'm not sure if I can really get away with it. Currently in the design process now, so I'm printing up some like prototypes, some big rollers for it, uh, for like the big five kilo spools, because I think it would be eventually nice to get to where I'm just using five kilogram spools just everywhere so I don't have to keep reloading and kind of mitigate sort of the problems that come along with doing filament swaps uh, midway through a print. It's not like it happens a lot, but it does happen. And I am eager to get the P1P back in service because our other character model from Dark Digital, uh, I need to start printing the plate of asses <laughs> for that model, uh, but I really need to uh, address the flushings for that first. Over here on the Giga, the drawer section I did in Pet G, it was the first Pet G print uh, I've done on the Giga. And I think maybe I ran it a little hot because this is might take, it might take more than five minutes to clean this plate off because this, uh, maybe I'll put it back and heat it up a little bit before I try peeling it off. Cause man, that Pedgy really stuck on there. I tell you, getting this thing off was kind of a nightmare. Um, I probably shouldn't have put it in the center, but I wanted to, I kind of wanted to watch the first layer to see how my Z offsets were on, on the different, cause it's four different beds. Eventually did get it off and we're going to take a look at that here soon, but you know some of this is just really Really on there and so I don't know if it's gonna need acetone or something like that to get it off and maybe it's a uh, It's another reason to look into one of those trunks the 800 800 sheets That's just like one giant build sheet because if I was well, I was trying to originally pop it off one side and then I would pull it up and then it would bring the other plates up and then they would start overlapping. And it takes just, it's a little irritating to get these perfectly aligned. So maybe looking into that, cleaning that off today. And we have another print lined up for the Giga. All right, and so what else am I working on? Actually, I had a, well, I don't know if anyone else has done this. I've not seen it before, but a sort of a clever sort of device, a jig, uh, because some of these large prints are, it's a very fine line uh, when you're shipping these large things uh, of a $80 tab to ship something versus a $320 tab to ship something. So I've got some phone footage here. I made a little jig. Let's roll that. Decided to slap this together pretty quick after I slap a turkey neck and it's hanging from a pigeon wing. Uh, so I was playing around with measurements because I've been lamenting about shipping really, really large stuff. Uh, and it's like a fine point in terms of size. Once you go over a certain size, shipments go from $120 up to $320. So it's just like this one little clutch point. And so that seems to be any real combination of a 30 by 30 by 20. So you can adjust an inch here and there uh, so long as it meets that, what's uh, 80 in total on three planes. Um, so what I decided to do to help me kind of visualize and plot out, you know, how big I can make stuff before I have to like start breaking into parts or whatever, just kind of slap this together. Uh, will it hold? Hey, plus one for Brad's. Uh, so this I'm going to kind of keep around. And if I make something in the future, I can be like, okay, maybe I can fit that. Maybe I can't. And this is beneficial because the Moai head I got in here 
and I'm gonna paint. And so I'm thinking like, you know, if there's some combination of dimensions where this thing could fit in, it fits in almost perfectly, except for the top there. And as I look around, I have virtually no clearance here, virtually no clearance here. And so that's like the one thing that's make, that's taking this from $120 shipping price uh, up to $320. Well, from my zip code to Beverly Hills 90210, because if I want to offer free shipping, I have to like price in for the highest price domestic shipment. I guess, Ala does Alaska count as domestic shipping or is it contiguous only? Let me know in the comments below. But anyway, it looks like I've got a good like six inches here kind of protruding out. And I don't know that there's any way to make that work. So my options are shorten the model by six inches, cut the model in half and send it as a kit that they have to like glue together. I don't want to do that. <sighs> or chop his shoulders off. Uh, if I chop his shoulders off, I just thought of that. Damn, I'm smart. Uh, if I chop his shoulders off here, that would kind of fit. Like people would say like, no, nah, yeah, that kind of is okay. And then people could like rest it against a bookshelf or something. Maybe cut one shot. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, so I'd have to see. But again, like, do you really want... You know, like, I don't like the product being, like, right up against the box wall. Now, this thing is built solid. So, you know, I have to take that into account when I ship it. Like, you know, you're not going to have a lot of packet, uh, packaging buffer area. It's going to be right up against the wall. And so if I do that... Um, I cut the shoulders off. I want to give myself at least, at least like a half an inch uh, to put some bubble or something. And then if I cut the shoulders off, then maybe, just maybe, I can close the box in a little bit and I can get a little extra out of the height. So we have, yeah, it's about five inches coming out the top. So that would be, well, let's just say, you know, two and a half two and a half in, so I'd have to cut his shoulder off basically right here. So if I'm looking at, if you're looking at it from the forward frame, it's pretty aggressive. Um, it's basically his ear down. And so that, in order to keep the symmetry of the model, maybe that's like a cleaner way to do it. Just kind of like off the top, the point of his ear here, just come straight down and chop it off. And that would allow me to preserve the height, which is really the, 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 the defining uh, dimension, the Y, or the Z, rather, uh, of, the, of the piece. That's what gives it its, its size, its striking size, is the height. And so if I come down, chop it off, that gives me plenty of room. I can actually increase, I can make it a little taller because this isn't as tall as the Giga could go. Um, so maybe I'll be playing around with that today, but I think the real winner here is having this jig. I, I've not seen anyone do that uh, for 3D print stuff anyway. Well, no one prints big stuff like this. Um, but I think this is a pretty super handy tool. So, you know, four bucks worth of furring strips, a few brads, and uh, you, know, you can kind of make this in any dimension that you want. I'm sure they make it like a collapse. Hey, maybe I'll make a kit and sell it on Etsy. That, my idea. No one take my idea. So hopefully using that in the future to kind of size out some of these prints. It was very illuminating using it on that giant Moai head uh, to say like, okay, if I cut off his shoulders, uh, then I could probably fit it in a package that would be like 80 something dollars to ship. So if I keep the same price, you know, that's an extra couple hundred bucks in my pocket, or I could price it lower and hopefully achieve some more sales. Speaking of Moai heads, I got this one. I showed this one in the video yesterday uh, with the, you know, the sort of the stone finish. I'm going to do the big Moai head in that granite finish, but I just need to buy those cans of paint. And again, it's going to be a little pricey, uh, but also some other like, cause I haven't listed this yet. So it's an unproven uh, market, but there's dozens if not hundreds of these uh maybe at least dozens of 3d printed moai heads on etsy uh so i thought maybe you know this one came out it's a, an easy print i've got all these exotic filaments uh, maybe try one in a silk one in a rainbow i've got some of that glow in the dark pla i'd have to i'd probably need to run it through the bamboo and that would kind of cap me 
at 250. Uh, but it could offer variable sizes on it and at least test it out. So I'm gonna throw this up on the Etsy today and probably I'd like to get started another one in one of those more exotic filaments, uh, probably a rainbow, maybe a silk or something like that. You Joy Bio is sending over 10 spools of filament to sponsor a print, one of the big ones of these on the Giga. Uh, so I asked them to send over just their gray, their metallic titanium gray, because it would come out kind of a little closer and finish to this, you know, it's like the stone sort of look. Looking forward to that too. Also, huh, here's the PET G print for the P1P drawer. Came out a little rough. <laughs> you know, I don't have a ton of experience with PET G. You know, I've been printing like mining stands and stuff with it. This thing is built like a brick shit house. Uh, and the infill is not that crazy. I think I put it at 20% just to like be safe. Uh, but overall, where the printer sits in these uh, little recesses here, it carries the weight straight down. So I really didn't need to fuse this model together, uh, but for peace of mind, I kind of wanted to. Um, trying to clean it up though, I ran, I obviously ran this too hot. Um, there's a lot of areas where stringing, I mean, I took a torch to it uh, to clean it up a little bit, but you can just tell with the sheen on it. I think that's, that's characteristic of running Pet G too hot. Uh, but overall, it, it is very solid. Now, this gets a drawer, which I printed in PLA. And once again, thanks to the kind subscriber that sent me the email with this to try to correct my flushing issue. This drawer, this is just the front of it, is supposed to slide in and you pull it out and you re retrieve your flushing volumes. But when I was started looking at the dimensions of this drawer, like here's kind of the back section, I started looking around in this and it has like a little ramp here to, you know, move the, uh, the, the pebbles or the flush or whatever towards the front. Like I'm looking at the volume of this and like this doesn't really hold that much flush. Like, you know, and when I when I do one of those character model prints, you know, this is, you know, this whole entire tray will be full from one of those prints. And I started thinking, you know, I really don't want that flush clogging up in the back and moving its way up the chute and then it's really clogged and then I have to like get down in there with a plunger or a snake or something like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the P1P on top of this and I'm just gonna leave this open and that way when the flush comes out, it'll just kind of rest in here and then I can look with my eyeballs and see if it's full and just kind of move it out. Maybe put a little tray on the front of the shelf or something like that. Uh, just to see it. And then in the future, if I want to, I can put a drawer in there or something like that. Thank God, it took forever. I finally got this uh, printed, or I'm sorry, uh, glued together. The two part for the Colt Python. Now this is on the razor's edge of what I'm gonna be able to ship in that like, you know, before going into oversize. And it's not gonna leave me a lot of room in terms of padding and stuff like that. Originally wanted to do it in two parts, but overall it's pretty cool. It's, it, the drum spins. Let's play a little Russian roulette. Actually, maybe not. 3D printed uh, gun anything is kind of under the microscope. <laughs> it's kind of under the microscope right now. It's, it's, it, I, it, I did for a moment think like, you know, should I pull my Etsy listings of all these like enormous uh, gun models? Because that guy, the CEO guy or whatever, uh, the assassin uh, apparently used one. Um, not, I've never printed anything. If, for anyone watching, I've never printed anything like that other than art models it's an art model it's plastic it does, it's not real okay does this look real i guess it does look kind of real it's not real also got some correspondence back from flash forge and it seems like they're going to be sending me over a model to review a printer to review and they seem on board with giving it away after the review period after i've had time to review it and sort of evaluate it and feature it on the channel uh, again, you know, like when a, any sponsors that kind of come through, I want to make sure that that is a component in some way uh, that they're not just sending me something like I have something to give out or whatever, because that just increases, you know, following, which is ultimately what I'm after and eventually more sponsors. So uh, very eager to get my hands on that and flesh it out. It's not in hand yet. So, I, you know, knock on wood, I don't want to jinx it yet, but that will be very cool should that come through. The other thing that I'm probably most excited about is the next print for the Giga. Had someone reach out asking if I would quote a car part, a front fender for their car. I'm not sure what kind of car it's for, probably a Miata. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> hey, live your life how you want. Uh, they asked me because they said that they got quotes from other printers and the, the quotes were astronomical. Now this is a long piece. There's no way it would fit in one go on the Giga. I would have to slice it in half in order to do it. Um, but that kind of affords another opportunity as I could ship it in two parts and maybe, I don't know yet, get in under that oversized shipping cost because that really seems to be 
kind of the killer. And I can only imagine that when he got the quotes from other people that were too high, uh, it was because of the shipping cost. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable to me because the total part that he wanted, it was like right at two kilos of uh, Pet G at 15%. Yeah, and he said he was going to fiberglass it over, which would add all the strength he needs. Now I told him, like, I could certainly get it, you know, in a, an undersized package if I cut it into thirds or something like that. But then it's like, you know, you start thinking about structural integrity uh, and it's on your car because it's going to be dealing with stress. Now it's fiberglass, sure. Uh, but uh, just corresponding back and forth on that. Told him I would do it at cost plus or like, you know, some like low fee because this is, it's more about the content and kind of proving the concept. If I can do like auto body parts. Uh, because if he's financing sort of that test, then that, hey, that's cool in the gang with me. I don't know that I want to do that for everybody, and hopefully it does turn out cool, but it's another avenue nonetheless. It certainly counts as a functional print. It's certainly, you know, something that is like an avenue. A lot of people work on their cars, you know. A lot of people wreck their cars. A lot of people want to upgrade their cars, and people always need car parts. And there are a lot of older cars that they don't make the parts for anymore, and I have a giant printer that can spit out um, kind of custom pieces that could fit there and you really need to fiberglass it over because it's not going to stand up to the elements and it's going to degrade. Uh, but it's certainly a very exciting opportunity. Eager to take a look at that. If you've had any experience like that printing stuff, auto body parts, let me know in the comments below or what you think generally about that sphere, that sort of lane of 3D printing because it's completely alien to me. Once again, I appreciate Everybody commenting and engaging on the videos certainly helps that for the channel growth Let me know what you want to see in the comments below what you like what you don't like whatever engagements engagement Helps me grow along the way be sure to like the video because it's the nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this I'm the technicals see you next time